Okay, so thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, welcome, everybody. We are going to look at the um, Spring 2021 Photoshop and Adobe Fresco CC brush set update. Um, I'll be monitoring the chat here uh, on YouTube. If anybody has any questions about anything, uh, just let me know, and uh, I'll be checking in. Okay, thank you for joining me and uh, let's get going because there's a lot to cover here and a lot of good stuff to look at. Um, now, in this brush set, uh, we have quite a few interesting brushes. Now, you know, the, the question I always get is, uh, after almost, uh, what is it, 1900 brushes, don't you run out of ideas? And somehow the answer is no, because there's just always something cool to make. There's always something that I think could be useful for artists out there. Um, and so, uh, for example, we have stippling brushes in this uh, set here. So I wanted to quickly talk about those first, and uh, then we'll go, we'll go through some of the other brushes here. Um, now here's the full brush set. We have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about uh, 28, 29 brushes, I think, in this set. It's a big one. Um, but many of those are stipple brushes. You'll see that there are 10, okay? Um, and I don't know what took me so long. I don't know why it took me so long to make stipple brushes, but here they are. So why don't we take a look at those? Here's a little, little drawing I did with some of uh, those brushes right here. I'll just hide that for a moment, and we'll just take a look at how these work. Now, if you just kind of tap on the screen like this, you're gonna get a very sparse, okay, application of the stippling. But of course, as you cover more territory with multiple strokes, you can then get that stippling pattern to be denser and denser and denser and so on. So you have lots of control here. Um, and so you might wanna be freehanding it and just kind of drawing with these, right? Depending on how much control you need, right? Uh, but in other situations, you might wanna do like what I did here in this example, which was where I made a selection and then I stippled inside of that. So I think that could work really nicely as well, you know, so you have this little shape here, you could just kind of stipple along, just kind of stabbing at the canvas here gently, you know, I don't want to break my Wacom stylus, so I will tell you, I've never had one in all those years I've been using these things, never had one break. In fact, I um, got my first Graphire Wacom tablet back in 1999. And uh, that thing stuck with me all the way until just a couple years ago. It still didn't break. I just donated it uh, to a public school because what the heck, you know, 20 year old model working beautifully, no issues. So, um, wow. Welcome is not paying me to say this, but I will tell you that um, they really make some pretty amazing products. Anyway, you can see how this works inside of that shape and how nice that is. Uh, let's take a look at some of the others. Okay, so we have this stipple bot too. Now this one, what I like about it is when you draw with it, okay, you are going to be working within the confines every time of a fixed brush, uh, brush um, width here. So like whatever the diameter is, okay, as I draw, the scattering that's occurring is happening sort of inside the boundaries of that fixed width. So you can very easily control the space, all right, that you're drawing inside of. Uh, let's see, any questions here? What's up? Hey, Sherry, hey, Laura. What's up, God's Astronaut? Nice to see ya. Um, is there a step-by-step -step video of how I download brushes into my Fresco app? I've tried and get, oh, Sherry, uh, lots of ways to do that. Um, first, if you wanna get the brushes from the Adobe website, what you do is you go to the little plus sign at the bottom of your brushes list. So open your pixel brushes, the very first option in Fresco. And then what you do is you scroll down to that little plus sign at the bottom, tap on that and it says add brushes. And uh, what you can do is you can tap there and then navigate to wherever you've saved an ABR file, which is a brush file, wherever you've saved a brush file on your iPad or in Dropbox or wherever, and uh, it'll just load them right in there for you, okay? Um, the other thing you can do is you can tap on the one that says explore or discover. Uh, brushes and if you tap on that it'll pull up the Adobe brush library um, Which uh, looks like this is this if you're on Photoshop This is what it looks like you get this nice page and look at that right there at the top spring 2021 brushes They are live as we speak 
Um, in North America, they'll be rolling out within the next seven to 10 days worldwide. So you can grab those as well. Um, but yeah, if you happen to be in North America right now, you can grab them right this instant, download these and follow along with me if you want. Um, and this is what it looks like in Photoshop. You get all these fantastic brush sets, so many of them to choose from. All of the updates you'll see at the bottom here, the summer, the winter of 2019, 2018, 2020, right? Lots to choose from. We even still have these nice, uh, nice uh, Keith Haring inspired brushes. So that, that set will not be there forever. So go ahead and grab that um, while you can, okay? Um, but if you're in Fresco, you're gonna see all those same options just pop up directly in the app and you can follow any one of those libraries and then you'll see those brush sets get loaded in for you as well. Hope that helps and answers your question. Laura, you're wondering about vector brushes. Will there be a vector collection soon? Great question. More vector brush options are coming to Fresco soon. Um, all right, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. All right, so um, by the way, to get those brushes, remember you come to your brushes panel, okay? Brushes right here. And the top right, there's a little uh, drop down menu and you go to get more brushes. And when you tap on that, it pulls up that nice menu for you. Alrighty, so check this out. What I meant when I was saying that you kind of can find the area you're drawing in is this. I can just control, basically, if you look at this, the boundaries within which I drew that rectangle, right, are very easy to control. And so that's what I like about this second stipple brush. Um, third one, you'll notice has a different shape to it. These little uh, speckles are more random. Um, every single one of them will have a slightly different look. And what I love about this is it's just a very natural looking way of stippling. Um, you know, if you're just kind of stabbing at your paper with a pen, when you're using traditional materials, the marks that you make won't always be consistently exactly the same shape or size. And so um, this really does a good job of emulating that, right? Check it out. Check it out. Come back over here and then just keep on going and fill all that in, etc., 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 etc. You get the idea. Alrighty, and then so that just continues. We have then this nice stippling pattern. And you can see that's a completely different shape, isn't it? This one has like little dashes, you know? Dashes and dots, but those dashes thrown in really make that a completely different sort of set of marks. Now we get into the bigger ones, okay? And look at this, the stipple bot six. Very dense, very heavy, and much fatter little dots. And you can just kind of dot your way around if you want to go really faint, right? Or sparse, I should say, huh? Like so, and then you can really just color in an area as you get more towards a solid black, all right? I've made all of these. They're designed for high res work, okay? If you're working for print resolution. Um, so you could totally size them down for screen stuff, right? Don't worry about that. But I wanted to make sure they were big enough for people working at print resolution, all right? So that's why they might look a little big as I'm demonstrating them here. But of course, when you print, you're gonna be looking at something more like that, right? So that's a much more natural kind of size for the stipple to be. Okie dokie. Um, here's number eight. That one's really sparse. Also more random sort of marks being made there. It's almost like a dust kind of a brush. You could use it for adding texture to something. Really handy for that. Um, number nine, also one of those brushes that you can control very easily with um, how much real estate every mark you make will cover, okay? Very predictable and easy to work with in that respect. Uh, and finally, number 10, um, this one is in that same vein, giving you lots of control, okay? I like to, I really like to do this, just to tap the screen like this and then fill in. Um, all right, let's see here. Is there a cheat sheet that shows examples of all the brushes? There is, follow me on Twitter for the cheat sheet. I'm gonna post it um, right after this stream. I've already posted it uh, twice before, but I'm gonna post it again. Please go ahead and grab that. Um, and it looks like, uh, let me grab my brush sets here. 
just make sure that you can see this spring 2021 um, here we go so where did that go oh it's opening it here we go this is that cheat sheet for you okay so you can grab that I'm gonna post it up on Twitter again um, and on Twitter I am at Kyle T Webster at Kyle T Webster so find me there um, and uh, we'll be in good shape all right and I'm working with the team right now to see about getting some of those cheat sheets for all the brush sets on the uh, website but in the meantime what I need to do is just I think I should just probably put them somewhere and point people towards them in the meantime so they can grab it but Twitter is always the best place to find those uh, around the time when they're, they're released um, but of course it'd be better if there was a place you could just go at any moment and grab them and so we need to make that happen all right let's get started with the other brushes so the Rippler brush um, this came out of this idea where I thought wouldn't it be cool to be able to really quickly add sort of a ripple effect uh, to a body of water I'm just drawing something really fast and I want to you know let's say I've got this area here um, that's going to be uh, water and I just wanted to be able to do this. I just wanted to be able to go ahead and go across and do some random sort of ripple shapes. And this one will follow the direction of your stylus. Okay, so if you want it to be really, really even, Steven, all the way across, what you do is you come to your brush settings, and for shape dynamics, you turn that off. See that? So it's just going to be straight across like that. All right, now the size of the ripples is controlled with pen pressure. So as you're going to go receding into the distance, you're going to want to make those ripples smaller, right? And as you get closer, use more pressure and build them up like this. But you can see how nice that it's like a little, like a lake, you know, lake or a really lazy river, something like that. And um, what I would do next, of course, is I just come in and make a little silhouette of this boat right here, right? And we'll just fill that with color. And uh, here's our person just sitting in the boat, maybe fishing, right? And there you go. Simple as that. So that's the ripple brush. I thought that'd be fun. We have a rippler uh, CD. Now CD, whenever you see the words, uh, the letters CD in one of my brushes, that stands for color dynamics. It means that color dynamics have been applied to that brush, okay? So why don't we just hide this for a moment and I want you to see what that looks like. We'll go ahead and grab a color this time instead of just the plain old uh, black fill there. And now when I paint, you'll see that there's a little bit of color variation every time I drag that brush along, right? You should be able to see that. A little bit of color variation, okay? And that's because of those wonderful Photoshop color dynamics being applied right da -da 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 -da. and you know you could go crazy you could just use this as a sort of textural brush as well look at that you could just kind of drag it back and forth and all that variety you're going to get with color dynamics is going to make it so every new stroke adds just a whole new dimension right and i like how the white's peeking through it kind of looks like highlights on the water you could even go ahead and grab some white just tap here and there Right, make some highlights, then go back to your blue and selectively just kind of paint over it like this. See what that does? Adds those nice little highlighty kind of bits, like you'd see out on the lake or whatever. That's pretty, I like that. Go ahead and even this out, just knock that back, delete it. Ta da! You just painted some water. Couldn't be easier, right, gang? Okay. Uh, hello, I want to ask. Are these new brushes compatible with Fresco? Of course they are, Haru. They are all compatible with Fresco. Yes, indeed. Um, any other questions? Let's see. Uh, is there color dynamics option in Fresco? Laura, guess what? Color dynamics option is on the way. In fact, I'm already beta testing it right now internally. So yes, we're gonna have that setting for you um, completely adjustable in the same way that it is for Photoshop. You needn't worry about that. Um, Sorry it's taken us a while to get that in there. Uh, we're trying to get everything we can as fast as possible in Fresco. You know it's still a pretty new app, um, but lots of cool stuff coming. So if you'll just bear with us, I promise you will not be disappointed. 
Uh, all right, so we'll drag that down there and look at that. We've got a nice body of water we painted in a few seconds, huh? Uh, moving on, Leafala. Now, this has another part of my demo here. Let me just pull up, uh, where is it? Let's see. Here it is. Um, here's this little image I've got of a little sort of a landscape, right? Now, if I want to quickly add some leaves to the tree, add some, uh, some brush down here and some bushes and whatnot, um, easy peasy, all I do, grab this nice uh, color. I'll use something that's slightly warmer, slightly darker. Okay, we'll come down here. We have Lee Fala, one, two, three. Three Lee Fala brushes, and then we have an underbrush uh, uh, brush as well. And then we also have a Frondi brush, which I'll show you in just a moment. But let's take a look at this Lee Fala one. I'll size it down just a hair, since I am drawing on the screen. Whoopsie, hang on. Let's go to our group here and paint on top. There we go. We'll just add some leaves. If you want to go a little bigger, you can always size it up. Pressure is going to control the size of the leaves. So more pressure, bigger leaves. Easy, right? And you can tell that these have that nice color dynamics uh, setting in there as well. So subtle changes to hue, saturation, and value all the way through as you're painting, okay? And let's just drop a few in right there. We go for a slightly lighter color, and we come over the top just to catch that sunlight, okay? Look at that, just like that. And in a matter of seconds, you are good to go, right? So, you know what I'll do? I'll make a selection around this so I can stay within the borders of this uh, rectangle here while I paint. And that'll make everything look a little neater. Um, and so then what about down here? Well, let's just go ahead and grab that underbrush now this responds to pen tilt, okay? So whichever way I rotate my wrist, I'm gonna be painting. So I'll just throw some nice underbrush here, some bush, bushy, uh, leafy stuff down here. Look at that. Okay, I'm using the darker color first, as before. Just pop in front of that, that tree trunk there. I really like the random shapes you get with this brush, because you can see that it does this little outline sort of thing here uh, for some of the shapes, but then it fills in others. Really fun. Go for the lighter color now, and let's just pop right over the top like that. Beautiful. And again, I'm using pen pressure to control a lot of what you're seeing here for the size of the brush. Okay, kind of bounce back and forth with the color. Go a little warmer here. And uh, there you go, that's it. You know, just add that underbrush in there, back, bounce back and forth with your color. All right, let's pop back behind that tree trunk. Why don't we come in here and we'll just add a bit more there behind everything else. All right, now for variety, of course, I'm gonna grab that Leafala 2 brush, or actually Leafala 3, there we go. I think this is the one that I want with the sticks in it, yeah. This one has these little sticks get thrown in. See these little lines that get thrown in, which I really like. Um, adds just another little bit of variety to what you're doing, okay? And we like that variety. So we just throw those in there. Pop over the top again to where we were just painting. Let's just add some action right there with that same brush. Go a bit lighter. You can see how quickly you can just throw this stuff in and uh, you're cooking with gas here, gang, okay? Now in the background there, you could do the same thing. We could use that um, that same Leaf Ala 3. We could use a Leaf Ala 2, which is a nice variation of the original Leaf Ala brush. Um, again, go for that darker color. Maybe a little lighter here. We'll grab some of this and go a little darker. There we go. And just, you know, Throw that in there like this. And again, these are designed for print resolution work, so they're quite large, okay? So if you need them a little smaller, well, hey, just size them down. And the way I do that is with the bracket keys on the keyboard, okay? I use the bracket keys liberally, constantly sizing my brushes up and down, right? And that's what I like to do. Anywho. All right, you get the idea, right, gang? Very easy to work with these. Now, let's hide all this for a moment. 
And let's take a look at the Frondi brush, because this is another extra brush I wanted to throw in there for you uh, for doing sort of jungly palm frond foliage. Look at that. Just throw that in, just like that. Grab a lighter color, pop over the top, right? And there you are, you're all set. There's your jungle. There's your jungle ground cover, or it could be treetops, whatever. Whatever you wanna do. Remember, if you're using a later version of Photoshop, right, you can go ahead and hold down the tilde key, top left of your keyboard in North America, the tilde, and that'll instantly turn the brush into a racer. So this way I can kind of like remove out some bits and pieces. You can do this additive, subtractive kind of thing. Go back in, fill in some of those ga uh, gaps there. And what that'll do is just add even more variety to the shapes that you're seeing on the screen, okay? Um, are the same settings on Fresco for that water brush? Uh, yes, they work exactly the same. Color dynamics are baked into the brush. Not to worry. Um, how do we identify which brushes are based on pen tilt and which ones pressure? When you're in uh, Photoshop, you look under brush settings and look at shape dynamics and under angle jitter, you'll see a control, okay? If it's set to pen tilt, you'll know that that's how you're controlling it. If it's set to direction, you'll know that you're controlling it with direction. Um, you'll see that in both Fresco and Photoshop. Okie dokie. Alrighty, now let's take a look next at the coral brush. Now, I had to throw in a halftone brush. You know I love these halftones. Um, this one's particularly unique in that with very light pressure, you'll see what I get, okay? Look at that, very light. And then as I build up pressure, goes to this really dense pattern like this. Okay, so you know, with my all my halftone brushes, they are pressure sensitive. First ones to ever do this, I believe now, folks have copied this and they're all, there's some other ones out there, I don't know. I uh, thought I saw a few. Um, but check this one out, it's got so much uh, of a variety of marks you can make just based on the pressure, all right? And you can use this for texturing stuff, you can use it for um, pattern design, you can use it for just who knows what. All kinds of cool options to work with here. Um, you know, and I, one of the things I love to do is I, I love to have, um, if it's like maybe a character is wearing a dress or something, right? So we have a character wearing a dress and uh, we have it filled with some nice color. And I go ahead and just grab this brush, just come over there and add like a cool pattern on the brush. Uh, uh, pardon me, on the brush, on the dress, you know? Change up the color and use lighter pressure and look what that does. See that? You can draw inside of it because I'm using less pressure. I mean, you know, stuff like that, that's what, that's what just is so fun for me, is to be able to play around with these really instantly gratifying shapes and patterns and, and, and whatnot, right? You can just do this all day. Let's make a little face here. There's a person. Look at that. Isn't that fun? There's the person. Ha ha. Why did I do this, by the way? Quick art tip for you. Don't just start trying to draw legs at the bottom of a dress, you know? Start where you think the legs need to begin so you don't mess up the portions. Okie dokie. Alrighty. So, slide that person over there to watch the rest of this show. We have the Inky Bop, okay? Gotta have some inkers in there. I'm always adding inkers for everybody because people love to draw. Uh, in Photoshop, and this one is just one of those really crisp, really nice brushes for solid, thin to thick drawing action, okay? You are gonna be set with this. You get a nice taper there when you draw with it. Um, it should be in good shape. And uh, I'd love to see 
people using this for their line art, you know. And I know it's a little overwhelming when there are about 60 other inking tools in the Mega Pack and so on, but you know, it's just all about variety. Not every inking tool is right for every individual, so you may have tried others and said, eh, can't really find the one I like. Well, you know, I'm just gonna keep making these for you so you can find new ones. Um, here's the kick drum inker. This one is really rough, rough and gritty. Okay, and uh, look at this. You do this nice textural stuff with it. It responds to tilt. I can rotate my hand, get a different angle every time. Totally different mark, right? Lots of texture and all this kind of business. Texture, texture, texture. We love texture. And uh, here is a person. Just like that. Look at that. So this one I think you'll like. Really nice marks you can make. Less pressure equals more texture popping through. And then the kick drum old inker is a variation of this with even more of the line getting sort of broken up and uh, oh, kind of like um, it's just like it's getting destroyed as you're drawing with it, right? And what I like it with these kinds of tools is something to be unpredictable, right? So every single stroke I make with it is going to be different from the last. And um, I think that's a helpful thing. I think that can add a spark to your work. It can make you work differently. When you're not exactly sure what you're going to get, you might be happy with those little um, unintended things that happen. The layout pen, which is next here, uh, this was inspired by my looking at some older advertising layout uh, work, you know, where I would just see these, these very sketchy, very loosey-goosey uh, studies that these artists were doing in um, the agency world for getting layout approval, basically, for something. And uh, I saw that and I just thought, gosh, I'd love to kind of, kind of get a brush that feels like that for everybody. And, you know, you can, you can sketch with this brush really liberally. And then you can just go in there and, like, you can bear down a bit more and get your lines a little more confident, you know? Um, see what I mean? So it's, it's kind of like it's, it's serving two purposes here. Get something kind of started and then move on to something a bit more, a bit more final, you know? So this one I like, that's the layout pen. That's the layout pen. Any questions? Let's see. Dress goes nicely with the jungle leaves. <laughs> Lasso art. Uh, oh, thanks, uh, Henry. Yeah, the, there's a demo I did for everybody. Um, check it out on my channel about using the lasso tool and how you can just do a whole illustration with nothing but the lasso tool and color fills. Um, and what what a powerful thing that is. You know, if you're feeling overwhelmed or too many tools, or maybe you just don't draw that much. Um, you know, just watch that video, and I think it'll inspire you to try working in more of a shape based. Kind of way you know to, to try something like that it's gonna gonna open up your eyes to some other possibilities i think so give that a try um and then finally the indie inker so this one is just you know it's kind of like you're getting just enough of a variety in the marks that you make that it isn't a hundred percent clean if i zoom in here i want you to look at the edge right there when i drew that line Okay, see how it just breaks apart ever so slightly? This is one of the most natural inking tools I've ever made. Um, and I, I like how that happens. I like how it just not quite clean, right? But you can still really control it. And I think um, a lot of you inkers out there are gonna really love that. All right, so we've covered the stipple bot brushes. Those are the stipplers. Let's move on to these uh, special effects brushes. They're the last of the bunch here. We'll hide all this business right here. Um, first, the gnarly brush, uh, and there it is, and it's gnarly. So why would I make a brush like this? What's the point of this? Well, you know, the first thing that this was used for for me 
when I was messing with it was, you know, tree bark. So I was like, look, I got a, I've got a tree trunk, okay? And I just wanted to have some, some bark texture on there. And what I do is like fill it with a gray, go a little darker, and then just do this with the gnarly brush. See that? It's like, perfect, there you go. Wanna add some lighting on one side, just kinda pop over the top like that. Come back with the dark. And that's that's it, there you go. So I just thought that was so fun and so quick and easy, and I really like it as a textural brush. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't draw with it, it's not really designed for that, it's designed for this, it's for what I just showed you. It's for quickly adding some really nice texture to something uh, with some good variety in the in the marks that you make. There's nothing about this when you look at it using it the way that I just did that has any kind of a repetitive feel to it, right? And I think that's one of the benefits of it. Um, the Gnarly 2 brush, okay, is going to take advantage of some color dynamics for you. It also allows you to have a lot more range of thick to thin with the brush strokes, okay, because the pressure dynamics are set to go to a smaller diameter when you use less pressure. And if I were to grab another color, you'll see here. Oh, I'm sorry, this, now this one does not have the color dynamics. This one does have the much uh, greater level of control though with thick to thin. Um, so you can see I can really go subtle here, and just kind of build up that weird texture like that. Um, but let's take a look at the Gnarly Fill brush. That's the one I'm thinking of. And that's gonna use this extra texture, right? Plus, it's gonna have color dynamics. And I think the, the, the example I gave when I first showed off this brush was like this. It was like a sort of a fiery kind of pattern that I painted with it. Um, but the reason it's called fill too is, of course, because what you could do is simply, it's already 700 pixels. I mean, this is a monstrous bu uh, brush, but you can just do this. Just go ahead and scribble on your canvas, okay? And continue to scribble like so, and just fill an entire area or a selection, whatever it is, um, with this brush and then just kind of go in different directions and just kind of use little stabbing motions here and there. And look at this, look how quickly you can create a really dynamic, interesting kind of a background, right? Just in a matter of seconds, you can do this. And I just think that's so fun. I love these kinds of brushes that allow you to do that. Um, all right, so let's go to the salon brush. Now this is part of my uh, attempt to always, I love working with this uh, impressionistic brushes, right? Huge fan of, of course, the French impressionists and everything. And this is just one of my latest attempts to really emulate that look of the brush strokes that you see in a lot of that impressionistic work. Um, you know, bordering on pointillism, but not quite. It's just this idea of subtly changing the hue and the saturation and the value when you paint. And um, also being able to control the opacity of that paint with uh, pen pressure. So I could select an area here and just lightly blend it into this area. And every time I do this, I'm using the Option key on my keyboard. If you're on a PC, you would do that with the Alt key. So I can sample color from the document. But this is just a great impressionistic brush. Um, and again, this is gonna give your, your work a look that has uh, nothing to do usually with what you'd expect from a digital painting. Um, highly recommend you try that one out. That's the salon brush. I'll pause for questions here. How do we identify? Yeah, I got that. Okay. Da, 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 da. Hey, thanks. Um, thanks very much, Laura. Inspiring. I'm glad this is inspiring you. Hope you go grab the brushes and play with them. Um, what's the name of the video on lasso that Kyle is referring to? Sherry said. Um, that's on my. Just go to my YouTube channel. And then go to videos, and you'll see it right away. Um, it's at the, one of the last one of the last four or five videos that I, I posted. So you will you can't miss it. It's got a picture of like a, a guy walking in a park with a cityscape behind him. Um, hey, before I forget, uh, folks, I want you to do something. Um, go to. We're gonna make this a little smaller. Not that small. Yikes! Here we go. Go to gumroad.com slash Kyle T. Webster uh, right now and grab my latest totally free brush, okay? The totally free brush I just released um, 
a couple days ago and it's called uh, the Builder Brush. Just grab it, snag it, play with it, enjoy it. It's very versatile. Um, all right, now let's return back to what we're doing here. So the big boy. All right, this is for all you concept artists out there who love to just knock stuff in really quickly. You got an idea for something, or if you wanna build a dynamic background with just some big passages of movement and slight changes in in um, the values, so you can kind of get your brain going on an environment or something like that. Uh, so let me just let me just do this. I'm going to hide this for a moment. Okay, everybody got this? gumroadcom slash Webster. Or you know what? I'll leave that up there and I'll just make myself a little selection like that, so I can leave that for a moment. So this is that big boy. Now look at that. Really nice, soft texture there. Okay. And what I like about this brush, among other things, is Let's say, you know, I, I'm just thinking to myself, all right, I want to build out some kind of environment. Just grab another color, just throw that in there, crisscross, go in different directions, and then start to make something happen. And I say, hey, all right, okay, I'm starting to get an idea that maybe this is my focal point right around here. Something's happening right here. Okay, that is the place where the action is happening in this illustration. So just build up the contrast there. Right away, my eye goes there because I say, hey, there's higher contrast. I know I got to look there, right? And so that is what I like about this brush. You quickly just knock in some shapes and then you play around with slightly smaller brush size. So maybe we're looking at a forest here, a forest environment of some kind. And I can start to just knock in some darks again. You go back and forth and back and forth. This brush is a beast. It's big, it's got some good texture to it, responds beautifully to pressure, and you can just make this happen, okay? Get your illustration started with some shapes, and then you are really on the way to the next bit, okay? And I can say, all right, so I've got something here to work with. I've got an idea, okay? Don't yet know exactly where it's going, but this is my focal point right here. Um, and I know that's where I want people to look. I know that's where I'm gonna focus my energy and I'm gonna have some high contrast there. So that's that builder brush. Remember, I'm, I'm zooming out a lot, so let me zoom in 100% so you can see how textural that is, okay? Lots of good juicy texture for you there, folks. Alrighty, um, that is going to be uh, the big boy and we are gonna move on to the flutter brush. This is a weird one, one of the weirdest I've ever made and I mean that in a proud way. Check this out. I'm just gonna paint in one direction and you say, hey, big deal. He painted a line, so what? Check this out. I'm going to paint the same line. Okay, I'm going to actually follow this line. I'm going to then paint off to the side. Check it out. Here we go. But a but a but a but a whoa! Look at that. Look at that. Whoa! And a whoa! And whoa! How fun is this? Come on, guys. This is the flutter brush. Never made anything quite like it. And who knows what you're going to do with this thing? I don't know. You know, you might just do palm tree leaves or something like that, and that's fine. But, you know, I think it's going to also be useful for other stuff. All kinds of textural stuff, interesting patterns and designs and details. I do not know what you're going to do with this. But I love it. It's different. It's weird. Um, and I want you to play with that. Uh, let's see... All right, you found that video, awesome. Glad to know it. Hi Toprak, thanks for joining us. I'm glad you're here. Okay, now, so that is Flutter. All right, we also have Flutter Side. So uh, this is a variation, okay. Variation on a theme, look at that. No matter what you do, okay, so I use some trickery to make this happen. One side will always be perfectly flat. Okay. 
while the other will always contain these nice spiky bits. And it's fun to sort of layer them like this. And start maybe moving in some other directions and doing something like this. You can start to see how you could do some pretty interesting stuff with this kind of brush, right? It's just very different. So I leave it to you. I leave it to you to discover what can be done with this, all right? But I am excited about it um, and the original Flutter, so both of these, I just think are gonna offer some really interesting uh, opportunities for people. Um, now, let us move on to the last two brushes and they are very different from anything I've ever made before. The first one is called Skyline, all right? And I'm going to first show it to you in black and white. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Getting all these different values, some texture, breaking up of the brush. I'm going to go the other way now. Like so. Now you know why it's called Skyline, right? Shouldn't be any great mystery there. Um, you know. Just take this whole bit right here, grab that Rippler brush. Let's grab that Rippler brush. Uh, Rippler, here you are. I'll, I'll show you like I did at the beginning of the video. We just go ahead and we turn off the direction for controlling um, the angle of the brush. And what the heck, I'm gonna knock the flow of the brush down to like 30% and we're just gonna drag it along. Whoops, wrong color, I want white. I'm just gonna drag it along like this. See that? Make it bigger in the front. And now we've got a nice reflection of the city on the water, okay? Just like that. So the Skyline brush does what you see here. It makes these weird shapes that pop up and down, okay, but sometimes get broken by these diagonals and have lots of texture. And you can go ahead and you can use other brushes to carve out little shapes once you've laid in the general Skyline. But of course there are other uses for this. Um, it's not just for this one purpose. Um, you can find ways to use it for texture, ways to use it for pattern, ways to use it for your designs. It's a massive brush, okay? It's, um, let me get back to it here. It's really large and it can be made larger too, just so you know. Um, the original stamp size for the brush was about 1500 pixels. It's down to 1200 at the moment, um, but it's really quite large. Now the up down brush is a cool sort of variation of this brush um, and also it takes advantage of color dynamics. And this is the last of the bunch we're showing off today. So let's enjoy it. I'll just hide this for a moment and I'll show you how weird this brush is by just painting across the screen. That is the up down brush. Again, nothing like anything I've ever made before. It's completely got its own thing going on. Pen pressure will control the size of what you're seeing. Okay, color dynamics are in play. Don't forget, you can always turn them off if you don't want them, but I love them. So there they are. Uh, now with this one, check this out. <laughs> you wanna quickly fill in a weird background with some neat, neat patterns. Just go ahead and do this, right? Change the direction you're moving. Da, 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 And you're good to go. So that is a really weird brush. Okay, and it's called Up Down. For obvious reasons. Okay. Well, folks, that's pretty much it for this brush set. May as well go ahead and quickly show you that, that free brush that everyone can grab, the Builder brush. Here it is. I'll zoom in 100% so you can just see what it does, okay? Ah, look at that. You can get a hard edge, you can get a soft edge, you can get nice texture in there, and you can stab it for just some really good textural elements, right? The tiniest bit of color dynamics are baked into this one, um, and I just love it for painting just for painting stuff in and for studies, right? I just really like this brush. Go ahead and size it down or size it up. It can take it. Look how huge that is. 
or I can make it really tiny and get some really nice sharp work in here, okay? This brush is totally free. Go grab it, go play with it. Let me know what you think. Using really light pressure, I can just do this. Anyway, some folks have already started doing something I didn't expect, which is they just use it with black as a line art brush for sketching or whatever. You can do a lot with this thing. All right, so check out, go here. If you wanna go grab that free brush, and uh, thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any more questions, let me just see here. Um, let's see. Thanks for everything. Hey, thank you very much for the support. Thanks for watching. Um, this video will be archived right here on my website. So I mean, I'm on my YouTube page. Sorry, me. So don't you know? Don't worry about it if you missed it. No big deal. I'll go ahead and repost the link on Twitter. Um, I'm at Twitter at Kyle T Webster, uh, and on Instagram Kyle T Webster. So put that up here again for everybody. Kyle T. Webster on Twitter. Twitter is where I'm most responsive. If you want to ask me a question or something, that's a good place to grab me, okay? At Kyle T. Webster. Instagram is Kyle.t.webster. Why? Because I'm stupid. I had um, my Instagram page or uh, ID the same as my Twitter, but in 2009 or 10, whenever I joined Instagram, I thought, eh, this platform is never gonna take off and I closed the account. <laughs> and then they wouldn't give it back to me. So, had to get another one. Thanks, Instagram. Alrighty, folks, there it is. Uh, follow me on YouTube, please, and um, you'll get more videos like this, as well as announcements for when I go live and all that good stuff. Catch me on Adobe Live um, four to five times a week, depending on which week it is. And um, I will see you soon. Enjoy the brushes. They are available right now in North America. These are the spring 2021 brushes. Uh, and you'll find them right here on the Adobe Brushes download page. Okay. If you're in Fresco, just go ahead and uh, check out the new brushes that you'll find there as well. Um, if you don't see them in Fresco yet, you're going to have to wait just a little while. But they'll be pushed out in uh, the latest release. So not to worry about that. Okay, gang. Thanks again, and um, I'll see you later. Everybody, take care. Bye.